right, time to address the people. What's up, guys? Got quite a few subscribers uh, coming over from TikTok. Thanks, appreciate that. Good to see you. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm still pretty new at this, so forgive me if I suck, if the content's kind of boring at first. I don't know. Tyler, I have your detailed rev limiter video coming. It's not going to be this video, but I am going to put together a nice video, really detailed, right going through how to do it and everything with the rev limiter. I got you. That might be Wednesday. I try to upload Sunday and Wednesday. But this video is going to be more or less, I'm, I'm trying to mess around with the belt sizing and uh, kind of just talk about what I'm doing. Again, it's not not a whole lot of real action or fabrication is going to happen in this video, but let me know in the comments. Please let me know in the comments because I don't get any feedback normally as, as far as this goes. Do you like long, detailed videos with all the fabrication work and, and everything explained out to the detail? Or do you more or less kind of want to see quick video and you know sub 30 minute sub 20 minute video with time lapsing through all the the, the, the stuff and then kind of getting to the end point and seeing what it looks like let me know i can do both i usually cut a lot out of my videos because i feel like it's too boring and nobody's gonna watch it but this time it's not a whole lot going on but stay tuned we got a lot of work ahead with this thing a lot of cool ideas i have so if you can make it through this one then we can get to the next one so uh, and also with the trucks, I know, I know a lot of anybody who's coming over from TikTok is, is really into the tractor and the lawnmower, the go-kart type content, but the trucks are where I really started the channel. And honestly, look, look at down my TikTok and all it is is trucks until like a couple weeks ago. So I do have more work coming on in the trucks as well. More videos with that. I'm going to have a intercooler and, um, do, I, I don't have the parts in the works yet, but I'm going to do a liquid to air intercooler on that. And I want to do marine injectors and eventually a bigger turbo on it and really go crazy with it. So Hope you enjoy this one. Bear with me. We got a lot of work to do that isn't really in this video, so this is kind of really a video about nothing. But hope you enjoy it. There you go. Welcome to Diesel Fuel Network. Friends and neighbors, friends and neighbors. I got a box to open for you because I know the internet thrives on that too. Anything you want to see is in that box right now, and it's for me. All right. Now, let me open this box. We'll see what's in there, and then we will discuss what's in there. Here we bloody go. In fact... Maybe I'll even bring you in closer because I know how the internet loves a good unboxing video. Well, I don't know why, <laughs> but it's a thing, right? All right, uh, what do they have in the box here? I have a feeling it is something, but I know exactly what it is. But put that a little bit. Got a little bit right here. Got it right there. There we go. Right there. Oh, there she go. Let's see here. All right. This comes straight from the eBay. Very old, very used. What do we have in the box number two? Because technically the wheels were box number one. Ah, newspapers. That's what they wanted. Mmm. You know, whenever you buy something on eBay, you probably can't even see me. You know, whenever you buy something on eBay, or I should say when you buy, like, something old and used, you always just hope that the pictures, and, and everything looks better in pictures, no matter what. So you always just hope that, okay, is it as good as it looked in the pictures? And frankly, it doesn't... I, I hope it's not in too good a condition. It's going on this tractor and going to be sitting outside. It only cost me 10 bucks. Let me see. Try to make this come out without making too big of a mess. Ooh, I like it already, though. I like the way it feels. Hey! Yeah, baby. <laughs> Look at that. Let's get this box out of the way. Yeah, so let me try to get this 
says $25 on there like it was at a yard sale or something, but it cost me, t it ended up being 10 bucks. That's all it was asking on eBay. Actually, I think I even sent an offer. I sent an offer. That's how I got it for cheaper, too. But it wasn't even at $25, so I think it was at like 15 or something. A foam protection they put on here, though. That's pretty cool. For a basically almost indestructible thing here. <laughs> and I gotta say, this thing feels solid as hell. So, this is a, uh, I don't know if this was on an old tractor I'm gonna say this is an old from a tractor probably and it's exactly the same actually you know what it looks bigger yeah, it's the same size it's slightly bigger so I'll bring you in here and we'll take a look see it's got a uh, got a brand on it but more than likely this was my probably like an original equipment definitely original equipment on something so here, let's bring you in for a closer look, right? Old school, nice hard thin rim with the little finger grips. Got a metal hub there, which might go to a double D shaft. Either way, the whole hub through there is metal. So if I have to weld it to something, I will just weld it. And we can see that it is, where is it? Keek Corp. So again, that's obviously a manufacturer, but this was probably as original equipment on some kind of a tractor. Now, that is a pretty cool steering wheel. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong, I love that steering wheel. In fact, if I could, uh, Find the other steering wheel, I'll show you what I used to have on here, but I used to have a little go-kart steering wheel on there. Pretty nice one, though, uh, from my original go-kart that I had when I was a kid, and it was a couple inches smaller now. I think it was a 12-inch. That is a 14-inch, and this is not actually a go-kart steering wheel. This is a aftermarket... Now, of course, the go-kart steering wheel is an aftermarket steering wheel, too, but this is a superior performance product. Now, the 500... This is actually a very, that, that steering wheel would have been very popular back in the 70s and 80s. That is an aftermarket steering wheel you would have found on, people would put those on dune buggies, uh, you know, anything, muscle cars, hot rods. Uh, I think more dune buggies than anything because the bolt pattern, this three bolt pattern, which I drilled, I think it had a dual pattern on it, but I did end up drilling to fit what I had. This is actually, this three bolt setup is for a Volkswagen, so dune buggy. It would have been like a dune buggy, something you'd put on a dune buggy. Now, I love this steering wheel, but it it's just a little bit too, it doesn't give me the vibe that I'm after as far as the look and the feel. And more important than the look is the feel. And obviously you're looking at it as you're driving it, so. That sounded like, I'm gonna, what was that? That kind of sounded like a Lamborghini. That was not, a, that's not a GTR. Obviously it had a dual clutch transmission. But anyway, I don't even know if you could hear that, but I'm getting a, off tangent here. So it's about the feel. This has a really thick foam type. Nice. This has like a really thick foam grip and yeah, it's fun, and actually, I'll tell you what, when I went from the 12-inch go-kart steering wheel to that, it was so much more enjoyable and fun to drive because of how big it is. It's a very large, it's 14 inches, but it's it's for this machine, it feels very large. So this is also 14 inches, although it actually is a slight bit bigger, which is fine. So as we can see, it is, you know, it just goes beyond the rim there. So it actually is larger than 14 inches um i almost want to say what i have on here is 13 and a half but it's not because i'm pretty sure i measured it at 14. um maybe this is like 14.3 or something but either way i just love i i wanted i'm this thing has always been in my eyes and i'm trying to make it like a classic pre-war 
car, like a Grand Prix car or something from the 20s, 30s, no, no, you know, like 1930 and older. And one thing is that steering wheel just doesn't cut it for me. It's, it's fun to drive with that and it looks cool, but that's going to be on something else. So this is the old school wheel I've been always wanting. I actually used to be, I used to, I found one, I used to work at a small engine place. I always wanted one off of like an old wheel horse. And this is very similar. This kind of looks like, might actually be what that's from. That might be from an old wheel horse. But either way, it's exactly what I was looking for. So I have more parts on the way, so I can't actually even install that right now. Uh, well, obviously I'd have to do some fabrication to install it. But more than more of what I'm talking about is the whole steering column assembly. It's not currently connected. That's why there's just these holding that into that position. But I have a whole uh, I have a new steering shaft coming and an, and a, a nice bearing to hold the steering shaft, double D shaft with the U joint. So again, this is a this is a shaft from like a inside of this is actually the internal steering shaft inside the car on a Crown Vic and some other Fords. So it's got the collapsible movable piece. And it's okay, it worked fine. It's just that the bearing surface where it would connect is not something I was I have I had some cheesy, I had some kind of thing there that wasn't that great to secure that and hold it in place. It wasn't going to go anywhere, it never did, but it just wasn't as, as good as I'd like. So I got the steering shaft, a new steering shaft along with the bearing, and I'm going to literally just redo everything at the steering shaft down. In other words, I'm going to end up, so as you can see, this is set up so that my legs go around that and the steering shaft goes down. So I'm going to end up, it also mounts the dashboard. I think what I'm going to end up doing is cutting the whole lower half of this off so that I just have all that room. So obviously before doing that, what I'm going to end up doing is extending over. And I, I got some material to do this with uh, yesterday, the other day. I'm going to come over and I'm actually going to run at the perimeter of the frame. So that way my legs go in between it. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to do that. I think I may just get this thing going again just to drive it around, though, uh, before I get that done. I'm not sure. I got a lot more work to do back here and everywhere else. Uh, but, yeah, also I got the four eight or uh, sorry 530s in. These are the rears. Obviously not on yet, but they are a little bit smaller than I was hoping. A little bit smaller than I was hoping, but as you can see, they are taller and they are a little bit wider than the front. So that's almost perfect. And in fact, oh, ow, that freaking landed right in my toe. <sighs> but anyway, I think those are going to be freaking perfect and those are going to spin up nicely. So actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and get those on there right now. is here. Is there even a difference? It looks like there should be, right? There's more wheel here. And there's more tire. Okay, they don't really feel that much lighter. In fact, eh, they're definitely a little lighter, but they're really not that much lighter. Maybe a little bit. They are a bit taller, which is uh, beautiful because, yeah, only a little bit, but still, that, that's going to give us a little bit more gearing, a little bit more top speed, provided we keep the same pulley ratio, should be able to go a little bit faster, or basically go the same speed at a lower RPM. I do want to just check to see how they fit as is, but I am going to put the spacers on. So let me just stick it up here. Oh, that 
that's good to know. I can't even put them on without spacers. This is a Peerless MST206 transaxle, which is a lighter duty transaxle. But don't confuse that with weak, because that's actually MST206, one of the best transaxles you can have for this situation. There is a heavier duty one uh, called the MST, or I'm sorry, called the Peerless 820. The heavier duty axle has one inch axles, and this has three quarter inch axles. So, so like I said, this is a three quarter inch axle. It's been extended probably a good two or th probably three inches. This is a five on four and a half keyed three quarter bore hub, and it's actually the application for that is for like a Husqvarna tractor. I'm not sure the model. But basically, having a three-quarter keyed hub like this is kind of rare. So it is a Husqvarna part that I know of. The ones on the front are one inch with a bushing. The one inch ones are more common. Uh, and then, of course, this is just a five on four and a half wheel, two inch wheel spacer for a vehicle. Uh, and that's what we're going to end up doing here. So that's what I have on the front as well, the same two inch spacers. now it's gone. I mean literally I just put the bolt in with it. Oh! How did I not see it? I didn't see it because the stud of the thing was... yeah. Now that is starting to look amazing. Look at that. There's the 480, 480 by 12 on the front. Very cool old school looking tread pattern. I love that, that kind of pie cut side. That's old style. Like, it's like a mini 1950s, 60s car tire and that is why I love that and then of course the back is the same only it is a 530 by 12 so it's a little bit taller and a little bit fatter and that should roll down the road nicely now I would like it to be a bit wider especially hey you know what it looks a little bit narrower it definitely looks a lot narrower on camera than it does in real life I don't know why that is but it's yeah, it's not that it's not tremendously wide so now the beautiful thing is how much room I also have you know between here one that means the exhaust potentially can go out a little bit further if I want to but also um, I have an idea and I have the parts on the way for some budget brakes and those are of course gonna go right there on the axle didn't get the parts in, won't have them until next week. Next week, probably Monday, so I'm not going to deal with that right now, but just... Here's just a quick tip for uh, anyone building a machine like this with a lawn tractor drivetrain. Um, when you change your pulley size, you're going to need a new belt size, longer belt typically. Uh, in this case, I'm not changing pulley size, but I extended the frame, and I now have six and a half inches of length added here. So I have this old belt with a rope extended on it. You could just use a, a rope itself, but you got to make sure it's kind of thick, because this rope's not very thick. That way it can go into the pulley where it would be. Run it all up through your pulleys, and... Like I said, I don't have it. Like I don't have it in there right now. But basically, you'll just run it up through your pulleys and you'll spring it together, and you'll get your measurement. Um, I did that already. Came up with approximately 106 inches. So all they had was 105 and 107. And I actually screwed up what I measured because, like I just told you, 
the rope is not very th thick, and I ended up measuring it with the rope in the back pulley, so it was kind of in the pulley more than it should be, so not sure if she's going to fit or not, but I only had two choices. I chose the one I thought might have been it, so, you know, you can order a lot of different sizes online, but I, I went to Tractor Supply and I got what they had, and that's usually the best thing because then you can, you can just go get your belt, and if it's wrong, you can just return it and get the one and get into the next size, you know. Another thing I got to do is, is belt guards, which I'm going to end up just taking the belt guards off the other machine. Well, they're going to be too short. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it's too long, isn't it? No, actually, maybe not. Uh-oh. It's too short. Son of a bitch. Hang on. Let me... It does fit into this pulley a little bit deeper, so maybe I just get it on the front. Ah, oh. oh, damn it. Yeah, it's too short. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I'm around something. What is that? That screwdriver I got in there. Maybe that's all that was screwing me. Yes. Dude, that might actually work. I don't know if it's going to disengage all the way because I don't have much clutch travel, though. You know what? I could probably figure that out right now. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna... Yeah, ain't no way. No way that's gonna disengage. I might... Kinda sucks too, because I think a 107 is definitely gonna be too big. And a 106 is gonna be perfect. That's the clutch right there the actual moving mechanism and see it only has a small amount of travel it needs to be able to travel a lot further because when it's disengaged it's still really gr like grabbing onto that pulley I can guarantee that is not gonna work but I'm gonna try and turn it over right now all right I'm gonna put the clutch down and I'm gonna just hit the starter if you see that belt spinning then we got a problem we gotta get a longer belt Oh, okay, I forgot it was in gear too. I almost ran myself over. So that definitely doesn't work. I'm not gonna take it out of gear just yet because there's no, there's no shift lever. Hey, you know what? It's kind of working. Not really. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. Crap. Yeah, you really can't have it be that tight because it's a real pain when you, first of all, you start burning belts up easier, but you also, it becomes a real problem if you're like driving it around through the woods and you go to put the clutch in and it's not gonna stop and you don't have good brakes, that is a problem. So I'd rather it be, I honestly rather it be a little on the loose side and then maybe add an idler pulley because I just remembered I did have an idler pulley back here that I don't currently have so this baby right here starting to look real fresh I got to tell you damn it the camera screwed up Those bloody things are expensive now. Well, I guess they're still not that bad. So look at this. I already got one belt and it was wrong. 105. I measured 106, but they didn't have a 106. And I don't think it... They, well, at least no store I went to has 106. 105 and 105.8 and 107 are what I found. But look at this. I'm hoping this one works and if I have to run another idler at the back, which I already did before I think I'm gonna do that because this one was $21 107 inches This is by the way at Lowe's because I went to Home Depot They barely had anything and like I said tractor supply I could have got a 107 from tractor supply, but they didn't have this one by the way this one however look This is a 107 cost me $21 same place same brand this one is like a special belt just for that particular thing, 105.875 inches, 
cost $42. It literally costs double, but it's a shorter belt. So I'm not even going to play with this one yet. I'm just going to go ahead and take this 107 and put on there and hope that it's right. Because it was only 21 and then I'll return that one. So let's go ahead and get under there and get that done. around that belt guard there she goes that belt guard just gotta squeeze get in there come on oh you flipping there she goes okay now oops do that. Ugh, it's hard to do it. One hand. There we go. Oh, oh. Oh, it's too sh long. Or it's actually maybe not. Might just have to add. There, check it out. It's a little looser. See, this side's tight because that's the side the clutch is on. So obviously, this side's going to be. A little bit loose and probably once it runs through you know it might even loosen up more but it might tighten up I don't think it'll tighten up but the thing is where am I with the clutch and I am not bottomed out on the frame yet but I'm real close so I think I'm gonna have to try I mean the thing is that's that's pretty good up here you know it's not it's not too Floppy. Oh, it'll definitely drive and it'd probably work pretty good, but I think it'll slip at the transmission when you try to launch it. But then again, I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe it was too. Maybe too tight is is gonna kill it. I don't know. Usually with these, you want them pretty fun, pretty freaking tight. It's the thing. Should I just try to use the idler pulley and save twenty bucks? Because I have an idler pulley think it might work and I have a bracket and everything or do I just try that and if it fits absolutely perfect then I'm not sure what to do well let me get the idler and see what it looks like oh, I want to get back to work on this before it rusts all out <laughs> we got to get that painted and protected Let's just see here. All right, you know, right now it's a little on the loose side. I'm gonna make it so it's not, and then I'm gonna push the clutch in and see if it works properly. I, I'm certain it's gonna work right now. Like if I push the clutch in right now, that is definitely gonna work. So let's see if adding this is gonna not let it work. Thing is, that is pretty freaking amazing right there. Because it's, it's grabbing it up there on the clutch. Now, obviously, this is not the correct pulley, it would be a V pulley. There's neutral right there. Okay. So, this is, as I probably said before, that's the brake. That just, that's just a lever, and it's real chintzy, and I just made it with parts <laughs> again from the tracker, but. What I chinched out on was down there where it goes. But either way, that was the actual brake right there. There's going to be... A couple of dirt bikes, no headlights, nothing. I love it. So, uh, there's going to be... Uh, I got a budget brake setup on the way. Parts on the way. Brake, dual brakes on the axles per wheel. You're going to see it coming up hopefully this week maybe Wednesday I usually try to upload Wednesday and Sunday so I'm liking the way that feels with the clutch engaged let's see that seems about right let's see how that actually operates full down with my foot 
Beautiful. No, it fell off. <laughs> that's, that's why I need belt guards. So the question is, was it good or did it just fall right off? Um, because the problem is, right when the engine starts spinning, it probably fell off. Let's try to... I think we're golden, my friends. I think we're golden, and that's good because this is the belt that cost me $21. So we could just take this other one, which is a... And actually, this one probably would have been too short. It's a 58 point, or a 105.8 inches, or 105.875. So it's almost, almost 105.9. It might have just worked, but frankly, I like this idea better because it can give me, it can give you some adjustability too. You know, a little bit more flexibility with possibly running different size belts. You can make this adjustable. Really, I like this. And, and like I said, I had this kind of set up before up here. But now that it's six inches longer in the back, at least the wheelbase itself is six inches longer. And so, so basically this is six inches longer back from where it was, farther back. So, uh, I, you know, having the idler back here is perfect. And I think that literally is where it's going to go. I think I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that just like that. And I'm going to burn that in probably tomorrow and then get the correct pulley for it. Yep. Let's mock up the exhaust with these tires now. I might change this, but basically, this is actually a, a drag pipe that would be like that on a Harley. And then this was tractor parts. I believe that was part of the deck lift. Just some random metal. And it bolts right into the transmission flange here. Where the, oh, I'll go down in the way. Go right in the way. Actually, it's perfect. I don't think I want to go any further over. Now, yeah, I get a whole bunch of people talking about, oh, you're going to burn yourself on that exhaust, but... Um, oh, it's really not even that close to the seat. Hmm. Still have to get the replacement pipe for that, and I'm going to replace that one as well. But that's that's looking pretty darn righteous. It's gonna make more sense once that stuff once that stuff's back on. But, yeah, I mean, you could see how far it is from the, you know, even if I take the original seat here and kind of put it roughly where it was, you know, you could see how far away it actually, oh, well, actually, now it's an armrest that burns. The seat used to be, like, up here. So it's a pretty big difference there, so I think, um... Well, now I'm going to my goal is to have this shrouded off. So, I'm going to make um my my idea or my I guess goal is, like I just said, <laughs> is to have some sort of a shrouded off body section back here. And I'm about to run out of time again. one um, wasn't really too much going on in this video just kind of figuring things out mocking things up that's kind of how it goes sometimes you know it, it takes a lot longer to for me anyway to think about what I'm gonna do put it together and kind of think of the the procedure and, and everything that I want to do and how it's gonna line up it takes longer to do that than actually 
cut, weld, fabricate the, the, uh, the stuff. So in this case, we we're just trying to find the right belt size and we got a lot more to go. I mean, I got to do some finishing on this frame and a lot of stuff, uh, brakes. Um, and I have a whole bunch of really great ideas that I want to implement on this thing. But more or less, I think you can look forward to it being running and driving relatively soon. Because even with all the stuff I want to do, I have, uh, I do want to just get it back on the road. Like, just get it driving so that, you know, get some entertainment out of it. But there's, uh, there's, there's too many other things that I want to do that are going to just take too long. So kind of going to do it in stages. We'll, we'll get it driving again and then I do want to get the steering so I don't know if I'm going to put the steering back together the way it was or if I'm going to do that but those parts will be here this week. Uh, this week I got brake parts coming, I got steering parts coming and again I have that rev limiter video coming. So if you made it this far through the video and I said it in the beginning but I'm going to say it again, I have the detailed rev limiter video coming and, uh, and yeah that'll be uh, Maybe Wednesday, because I know you guys are itching to see that. I didn't realize that so many people are going to be interested in that. It was just kind of a silly little idea I came up with a long time ago and I, I had implemented. But uh, yeah, so I'm sitting in water now, I just realized. A little bit. <laughs> That's it, though. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.